going live just a few minutes early, maybe half a minute early. Welcome, guys, to the cooking show. Having the plant flavor. So what do we do here? We try to interest you in eating a few more veggies, plants in your diet, right? That's what we do. Danger. Men cooking veggies. So we have a Georgian stew. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank Sophia for giving us this recipe. So you're not going to find it on a blog or anything, but she just gave me this recipe. We're going to mutilate it. And we're going to see how we do, right? So uh, it has oil with the traditional recipe. Oh, it is my birthday. Having said that, let's get right back into it. So I'm going to just read you the instructions that she gave me. Uh, firstly, you need to prepare these ingredients, 500 milligrams mushrooms sliced. So this is one of the three chopped up mushrooms that I got. I've got uh, white mushrooms. I've got Bella mushrooms, which are portobello, which are, or baby Bella. Uh, criminy, I believe, is what you call the... Uh, them, but uh, these are the criminy or portobello, baby portobellos, right? Uh, I've also got a mixture of some others, which if I pulled the thing out of the trash, I could tell you what the, what those are. You're supposed to have 500 grams of that. That is more than 500 grams what I just showed you. You're supposed to have one onion diced. There it is. I took half of a white onion, half of a purple onion. I teared up when I cut it. Uh, two carrots diced. That's pretty close to being diced. I'll take some pictures and show them on you on Facebook if you're there. If you're on YouTube, you might have to ask me. I don't know what what I have to do for YouTube. Uh, two potatoes, right? So those are small potatoes, and those were five. But uh, and maybe that's a little more than two full size russet potatoes. So she didn't uh, specify what type of potatoes. I'm using that. Uh, two tomatoes diced. Those are just regular tomatoes, uh, vine ripened. Uh, two tablespoons of tomato paste. I love this stuff in the tube. I don't know if they age it more or exactly how it's different. And then maybe some, so I talk about the hierarchy of health. Uh, going back here, two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm not going to do that. I've already got my heat going all over my pan. I put a little bit of water in there to where it gets steamy. And then I just do it from there. I also keep a little bit of water on hand so I can slow the cooking process if I need to. I, I have uh, gas. I love gas because you can adjust it a lot. Uh, 500 milliliters of vegetable stock. I got low sodium. I like low sodium. Although I am going to use, add to her recipe, and I'm going to put some Georgian spice in there. And uh, that has a little bit of salt, right? So I preach against adding salt, but I'm going to put a little bit of salt. So on the show, I try to do hardcore forks over knives, no oil, no added salt, no added sugar, no added flour. Now, having said that, I do use processed things. Sometimes I do use noodles. Uh, I put in the spices that I choose. Sometimes they do add a little just salt. Is that the greatest for you? No, a little added salt maybe won't hurt you. Uh, but in traditional American cooking, especially if you're going to a restaurant or you go to the grocery store and buy something in a can, it's going to have a lot of added salt, which over time can affect your blood pressure. So you get to choose what you're going to eat. I try to eat as little salt as I can. Uh, Salt, black pepper, dried kale leaves. So I've got some kale leaves that I've just chopped up. I'm going to put those in a little uh, toaster oven here and see if we can just dry some of those. I'm going to put about half of these. I'm also going to put the other kale leaves just right into this uh, stew at some point and let it cook with the other stuff. Uh, parsley, that's all chopped up right here, and I just dumped a bunch on the floor. Awesome. So uh, the recipe is very simple, and I think you will learn it. Heat the oven olive oil in a pan and saute the onions and carrots until softened, right? So I'm going to just see if this heat is hot enough that we can start sauteing that. Yes, I think that is warm enough. Uh, I, what does it say? It says the onions and carrots. We're going to take our onions pre-diced. We're going to go ahead and throw them in here and see how fast these get. You're supposed to do that until they're softened, right? So there's my onions. There's my carrots. We're going to let that go until it softens. Then we are going to add the mushrooms and potatoes, and you cook those until they soften, right? So when I like to do uh, onions and carrots, or mirepoix, which is French, and I think they add diced celery to mirepoix, but this is uh, what I consider aromatics that give the 
soup, stew, a lot of it's flavor. I know I'm talking to you. How rude of me talking to you with the back of my head. Let's go ahead and get a spatula. I forgot to get that earlier. We're going to go in here to the drawer. Let's just kind of move those around a little bit. Might have to turn this heat up a little bit. They're cooking kind of slow. I'm going to go ahead turn the heat up a little bit. Try not to let them burn to the bottom of the pan. In my opinion, that's why people use oil was to save their pans when they were cooking. I use a little bit of water. I do it the uh, hardcore forks over knives way. Uh, Facebook is just reminding me right here to go live. I think we are live. Hopefully this is showing up in Facebook. If not, it will be posted and popping the plant flavor. We built, we'll be on YouTube. We be, 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 be. And I would love to invite you to cook something live with me. If you are not shy of the camera, if you have an amazing recipe, if you have an amazing recipe, just reach out to me and I know we'll cook it live for you if you don't want to come on live with me. But if you do, if you are hardcore, if you are not afraid of danger, then come on live with me. I would love to cook with you. If you are an amazing cook and can teach me some skills, I would love to learn something from you. We're going to take about half of these kale leaves. We're going to put this in the toaster oven. I don't even know if this is warm enough yet, but what the heck? I just cut the tops off of some kale. The recipe, and the rest of the kale, I'm going to put in the stew later when we're cooking, right? I've never done this recipe before, so we're going to just put this in the toaster oven and try not to burn ourselves. We're going to see how that goes, right? So uh, a little later after we're done here, I'm going to be cleaning up my floor because I dumped a bunch of parsley on it. So it looks like these are starting to soften. That looks good. I'm going to just give those a little bit of stir with the spatula. Make sure shit doesn't burn. I'm going to get those a little softer before I throw in the potatoes. And the mushrooms, right? So we have a lot more potatoes and mushrooms than the recipe calls for. But the potatoes had five small potatoes. So this is probably a little bit more than the uh, two potatoes that she called for. So like two russet potatoes would probably be a little bit less volume than this. Let's go ahead and just screw it. We're gonna put in the potatoes and the mushrooms. I may put this pepper in before and during. I love a lot of pepper. So that's what I'm going to do. Like I said, this is more than 500 grams of mushrooms. It is a combination of just regular white mushrooms. Then I got the sliced ones, and then I chopped them up a little bit more finely. Then that. Uh, I got some baby bellas, which are uh, sometimes called criminy. They're small portobello mushrooms, right? Wow, this is already filling up a lot. So... We're going to just kind of keep this stirring, keep it overheat. We're going to let all this stuff get nice and soft, right? That might take a little bit of time. So we're going to stir the bottom contents off, kind of distribute the heat. The mushrooms will definitely, definitely give off some water. Right, so they're cooking, when they're cooking down, mushrooms like to give off a lot of water. Potatoes a little bit too, but nothing like mushrooms. So we're going to just try to keep this, we're going to keep that an eye on this. So I apologize for uh, putting my back towards you. I'm trying to get a good system here to where I'm talking to you and I'm cooking. My niece has come several times. Uh, Gina, my good friend, who's also giving me recipes, has come over at times. And we appreciated that a lot, right? So I could either be talking or and they could be cooking or vice versa. And uh, if you would love to come on here and cook with me live, take up the challenge and show me an amazing dish, especially if you come from another area of the world and I can learn some of your cuisine, I would love that. There has to I can always find some spice combination from different areas of the world that are amazing to me and i love to try out new and different recipes right so we're gonna let these soften up we're going to add tomato and tomatoes paste and stir and cook for about five minutes after the mushrooms and potatoes cook down and get a little bit soft right so i've got this on pretty high heat i've got this on about an eight and you do definitely see some steam coming off here. I am going to just kind of 
move the contents off the bottom so I don't get them stuck. Once again, people that cook with oil I think that this is why they cook with oil. But so that stuff doesn't get, especially in the uh, old days before they had like all the nonstick stuff. And you gotta be careful with nonstick stuff too because there were a lot of hot chemicals created a long time ago that maybe weren't the best for you. Uh, I do think I have some nonstick pans. I think I'm gonna try to get some sort of, I'm gonna do some research and see what kind of ceramic pans or something that maybe I can get also that are nonstick that may be a little bit less toxic. Uh, and I'm not sure about that, right? So do your own research. Uh, I do like to follow people like Dr. Michael Greger, nutritionfacts.org. I think that is amazing, uh, especially if you're thinking on getting a little bit more vegetables in your life. Well, maybe you decide to go vegan like I am, right? So us hardcore vegans, we're kind of hard to get along with, and that's cool. Uh, but I would suggest to you that vegans have the less, least amount of chance for disease if you look at the science of it. Uh, a Mediterranean diet um, would be a close second. So if you do eat meat, I would limit it. I might limit it to just fish if you are a meat eater. And these are just my suggestions from the research that I've done. I encourage you to go out and do your own research. And if you are a meat eater, you can tell me, Mark, go, the he go to hell, right? So, and that's cool too. I just think that you are increasing your chance of all sorts of disease, heart disease. I'm a, I'm a cardiac cath lab nurse. I have seen a lot of people die from heart disease. It is still the number one killer in America. And I think that if you're eating a high fat diet, it's not beneficial in the long run. So having said that, like if I could encourage you just to eat some more veggies in your diet, they can be cooked, they can be raw. I know people that are raw vegans. Uh, I've watched some amazing shows on juicing. I think that juicing can be very beneficial. I think that if in the long term you've had a very bad diet over the course of your life, I think that having a juice reset can be very amazing for your health. I know some people that are doing that. Gina, I know that she's going to be uh, doing a juice diet here uh, in a little while. And we're going to let those cook down a little bit more. Uh, I try to keep these shows to about 25, 20 to, 20 to 30 minutes. Let's just say that, 20 to 30 minutes. So I may finish... Uh, this recipe before it's completely done cooking and I will post on Facebook and I'm going to try to figure a way to out how to do it on YouTube here also uh, the recipe after it's done tell you what I think where I could have done better where I could have done worse uh, I like I said if you are a cook if you're willing to try and teach me something I would love to have you on here if you run a restaurant I would love to have you on here if you were born in another place other than the United States, and you have an amazing dish from your country, I would love to try that, right? And if you're not too afraid to come on a live with me, I would love to cook with you, right? So let's go ahead and put some pepper in here. My goal is to definitely get rid of this grinder full. I, like I said, I do love me some pepper. So this may have a little bit Too much pepper when we're all said and done here. This is starting to look like maybe we can start adding some of the tomatoes here a little bit. I would like to see the potatoes for sure get a little bit more cooked before we do that. I'm going to pour, like I said, I'm going to try and get rid of most of this pepper. I love black pepper. I don't know about you. Fresh cracked black pepper is the master spice, in my opinion, especially since I'm trying to slow down, eliminate extra added salt in my diet. Black pepper is amazing in my book. This is starting to smell pretty amazing. And like I said, this seems like a pretty simple dish. And I think that this is based on somewhere. I'm going to give away some secrets. I think this uh, person might be from Georgia, not Georgia in the United States. I don't know. I'm still learning. The, um, it does seem like kind of a, they do love their, so my wife is Ukrainian, and 
they do eat a lot of mushrooms in Ukraine, maybe in Russia, maybe in Georgia too. So a lot of that Eastern Bloc, Europe, I think we got rid of one grinder of uh, pepper. I can't even tell you how much that is. Hopefully my wife can handle that much pepper. I don't know if she's as quite as big of a pepper fan as me. I'm going to let these potatoes get a little softer before I do the next step. Then we're going to cook for five more minutes with the tomatoes. Then we're going to let it steam for about 15 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes, right? So uh, after the potatoes get nice and soft, I'm going to go ahead and put in, we'll probably end it when I put in the tomatoes. We'll see how long that takes. I kind of play it by ear as I'm cooking. I'm getting better at being able to visualize and feel with the spatula different vegetables as they get to a consistency that I like. Um, so uh, I think that that is the way that you get better at cooking is you just do it. It's in the experience. It's in the experimentation. And I think that if you are wanting to cook for yourself, doing a lot of that kind of stuff is really the only way to do it. I may put less than 500 milliliters of uh, vegetable stock in this after I get done. I'm going to let this go for a few more minutes. Then I'm going to start putting in my tomatoes and tomato paste. I'm just going to squirt it in from the tube and guesstimate what uh, what two tablespoons are straight from the tube, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some kale in. What the heck? I don't even know why I'm supposed to do that because that's not in the original recipe. We're just adding it because I know kale has a lot of stuff in it. I'm going to suggest to you that uh, most pharmaceuticals are derived from plants, and sometimes the plants have stuff that works synergistically with those things that they base drugs on, right? So there are certain drugs. Um, let's go look at an example. Cumin has a lot of acetosalic acid, I believe, and that is the drug aspirin, right? Uh, I think aspirin was originally derived from willow bark by some German scientists, right? So people that have heart disease have had a heart attack. They're going to be on aspirin probably for life. If any of my medical people out there can verify that, if you've had a heart attack, you're probably going to be on aspirin for life. Your doctor is going to suggest it because it makes the platelets a little less likely to stick together, create a blood clot, right? So when we have a heart attack, it's the blood clot that uh, completely blocks that artery. It's usually the uh, ventricular fibrillation that kills you. I'm going to go ahead and put some Georgian spikes in here also. I've got some black. I've got some black garlic also that I'm going to put in here. Oh, look at this. I've got two black garlics. This one seems to be a little left less. Garlic is also an amazing thing for your body. I'm putting my finger in here. I'm already cooking this for you. I wouldn't do that for you. Garlic is amazing for your body. Also, I've read amazing things about garlic and your health and all sorts of things that it's good for, you, right? So let's put a little bit more garlic. Uh, just a couple more minutes, we're going to start putting the tomatoes and stuff in here. And we're going to see how that does. Right? So like I said, I'm going to uh, post some cooks on... <laughs> I'm going to post some cooks. I'm going to post some pictures on Facebook. And I'm going to try to maybe make a short video for YouTube. I don't know how to do it for YouTube. So you can see what this stew looks like when it's all done. Like I said, we're getting close to the 20-minute mark. I don't like to go too much over 20 minutes just because I find people fall off because they get bored. They say, Mark, you're boring for 20 minutes or more. So uh, that is why I sometimes cut these off at 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and put the tomatoes in, right? Maybe this isn't cooked all the way. We're going to cook for five more minutes once we put the tomatoes on just because that's what the recipe calls for. Those are two huge ass tomatoes that were cut up. Mine ripened. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. We're going to let that cook down. We're going to go ahead and put the timer on. We're going to put that for five minutes. 
Because that's what we were told to do. I may stay with you the whole time this is going. And just talk a little bit. Uh, like I said, I would love to invite you to come and cook with me. Uh, once we get done with this, we're going to steam it. We're going to put the vegetable stock in. We're going to put a little bit more black powder in. Black powder. We're going to put a little bit more black pepper in. We're going to let it cook kind of at not a boil, but at a slow roll, rolling boil. Let um, What's the word I'm looking for? Hey, you people that are really good at cooking, give me the word I'm looking for. It's less than a boil. We're going to cook it like that for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then we're going to add some dry clear leaves. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Those kale leaves look dry. <laughs> I'm going to try not to burn myself here. If I do, you're going to hear a little yell. Got so much shit in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, that's really, really hot. Putting it on boil for a long time. I don't know how much of that puts off the. Uh... That was hot. Those were really crunchy. Oh, shit! Sorry, that hurt. Dummy. Big dummy. We're going to get some ice put on there real quick. Uh, woo, buddy. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. You're really not supposed to do that. That hurts. I'm going to have a blister there, guaranteed. Anyway, uh, we're going to keep cooking here. We're going to let that go for about five minutes. I'm going to stir that all up. Let's go ahead and take that pan off. Let's uh, use the burnt fingers, kind of move that around a little bit. Sorry about the curse word there. I don't know. Some people will find that kind of offensive. I apologize if you're somebody that finds that offensive. Like I said, I am going to have a nice blister on there. Um, and like I said, I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I might put a, a small uh, video on YouTube because I don't know how to do it there on the Facebook page. I am, I am going to just take some pictures of it and me enjoying it. Uh, as always, you guys have an amazing Saturday. Uh, if you are somebody who would love to cook with me so that maybe you can teach me how not to burn my fingers off, I would appreciate that. You guys have an amazing Saturday. Come back for more on next Saturday. You guys have a great fun in the stream, baby.